I'm Steve Gilman, and this is Brand Story, where we help you build stronger, more sustainable brands. On this episode, join me in the break room, where my co-host Lindsay Lachlan and I dive into the latest in brand and marketing. Hi, Lindsay. Hey, Steve. How are you? I'm great. Lindsay, any any words to open up or... Can I just hit you with a question? I'd say, go ahead, hit me with a question. Okay, here we go. So, oh, this is a good one. This is cool. So what should everyone in your industry either stop or start doing? How much time do we have? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Go for it. We're all ears. I think a big one for me is, can we please stop treating every meeting or every social post like a game of buzzword bingo? Um, we don't need to try to make ourselves feel smart or look smart by using, you know, acronyms and buzzwords and things like that. Um, let's communicate in a way that is true communication so that everybody can understand and we can have a real conversation. That's great. Please. And thank you. Yeah. Please. And thank you. Every AI post that's ever been written. I would add stop selling all the time. (laughs) Just stop. Like, Add value and stop selling and you will do so much better in so many ways. I think, you know, marketing is not sales. And I think being reminded of that, yeah, there's times you're going to ask for the business. But, you know, Gary V put it in a really, really cool way with the jab, 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 left hook. You know, you can't just come out and throw left hooks all day and just ask the, for the business. You have to add some value, make some friends, market you know, nurture your customers and then ask for the business. So if you're constantly in sales mode, man, you need to stop. I like that. That's a good one. Yeah, anything people should start doing? Ooh, I think to go along with that, um, work at building relationships, whether it's with your customers, whether it's on LinkedIn. I'm just thinking of all the times that we get, you know, a connection request on LinkedIn and then someone immediately sends a DM with a sales pitch. Um, But yeah, start building relationships with the people that you're there to serve or that you want to try to connect with and learn from. Exactly. I think I'd jump off that one. It's similar, but listen, I think, I think marketers forget that half of our job is listening to our customers so that we can look for opportunities on how to communicate with them better, look at how their lives are changing, what challenges they're facing so that we can help uh, with solutions to those challenges. You know, it's hard because as a marketer, you have goals you have to meet and you have, you know, marketing you need to launch and you have all this work you need to do. So you, a lot of times will forget that listening to the customer is a really important part of your job. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great one. Yeah, that was, that was a fun one. So what do you got? Well, I have a fun one for you. Oh, okay. Uh, If you were going to write a book, (laughs) what would it be about? Wow. All right. I think what I would write a book about would be uh, the concept of yes and from improv. You know, I, I studied improv for years and years. I performed improv for about 20 years. I took live, I took a improv troupe touring to colleges. Um, so really the concept of yes and where you authentically listen to what someone is saying and then add to it and not just immediately say no to it no matter how wild the idea has served me really well in business and in leadership and listening and helping clients because it's one of those techniques that comes from improv and there's a bunch of others. So this is what I could fill the book with is it's one of those techniques that can be life-changing. You know, it, I think people don't realize how resistant we can be to new ideas or to change. And one of the secrets of being able to do yes and is when you're hearing something, someone's talking to you, whether what they're saying is something you don't want to hear or whether it's a problem or a challenge or whatever it is, you start nodding your head yes. And the yes isn't I agree with you and I'll just do whatever. The yes is I find value in what you're saying and I'm going to go with it for now so that I can let you know that I genuinely heard it. And then I'm going to see what happens next. And I'm going to add so that we get somewhere because I think a lot of us run around going no but all day. Someone gives us a new idea and we go, no, and we're right. So here comes the butt, you know? So yeah, that's what I read. How about you? What would you write about? Um, So I remember when I interviewed at Gravity and you asked me to tell you about myself and I described myself as a crazy dog lady (laughs) and I still got the job. Um, (laughs) I think if I were to write a book, it would be sharing things that 
I've learned from my dogs. Wow, that's great. Because they have taught me so much just about life, uh, how to simplify things and be in the moment. And I feel like there's a lot of lessons that we could all learn from our dogs. So I think it would be cool to write a collection um, of stories about dogs and then things that we can learn from them. Please get writing that because I would buy that. <laughs> that sounds like a really fun book. Yeah, what, uh, that's so true too. I mean, you know, I think dogs are just perfect beings and we can learn so much from them. I think if anyone listening has a cool dog story, leave it in the comments for us and let us know. Yeah, please do. We love dog stories. Pictures welcome as well. 100%. What's the difference between a marketing or brand strategy or a plan or tactics? That is a good one because I feel like all of those words are used interchangeably all the time. Yeah, aren't they? Strategy, yeah. plan, and tactics. Yeah. Yeah. From my perspective um, and the way I typically operate, a marketing strategy is higher level, more forest view. It ties very closely into your mission and your vision. Um, and it's really short. Your plan is all of the details for how you're going to execute your strategy. And the tactics are the things that you're going to do specifically. So um, they're all the little components in your plan. A lot of times whenever we talk about tactics um, in marketing, we might be talking about the individual marketing components or pieces that we'll be creating um, that are part of our plan. So that's typically how I look at a strategy, a plan, and tactics and how they all fit together. I always trust how you look at strategy because I know you've studied it a great deal and, uh, and also gotten some certificates from Harvard on strategy. So you're one of the best strategic thinkers that that I've ever worked with. And it's always a blast talking to you about strategy. I think from a brand point of view, um, I always interpret strategy as at the very beginning as being connected to a brand's why and trying to connect that thread from a brand's why to all the way through to what they do for the customer and how they solve problems for the customer. And, you know, I think knowing that that's where you start on a good brand strategy. And, you know, so many times people want a strategy to be a plan. So they basically just call plan strategies. You know, once you get to the point of where you're trying to discuss how to execute, uh, it really has gone past strategy into plan, you know, and then like you said, the tactics are just the things you're going to do. But strategies just sounds so much fancier and, and more informed, doesn't it? It does. It sounds a lot smarter than plan. But, you know, a lot of things are just plans. So this next question for you, um, I know we keep saying, oh, this is a fun one. But this, yeah, they're this all fun. really is it's a fun one. It's an interesting one. Um, what is your earliest or your favorite memory of brand or marketing having an impact on a purchase that you made? Wow. Wow. Okay. This will date me, but that's fine. Um, there was a candy called Zots that, you know, you it's a hard candy. They came in these like wrappers with connected pieces, like they come in a little strip. And you would put them in your mouth and then they fizz, you know? It was basically just like bicarbonate of soda or something inside the sweet candy. And back when I was a kid, there was actually like advertisements for it, you know? And it was like the surprise that was going to happen and – you know, it would be very exaggerated in the advertising, you know, like you get energy and you'd run around and all these crazy things would happen. And I saw one of the messages for that. And I swear to God, I hounded my parents to just, and I mean, I just hounded them until they would get me some of the stuff. And then after that, it's like all I talked about because it was like this magic candy. And I swear to this day, like the second you asked me about the first brand I was aware of that like Zots just immediately came to mind. You know, it's powerful stuff. Like, what about you? I guess, and this is, it's not a brand that, well, I enjoy the brand. The product isn't necessarily one um, that I love, but I remember being little and having my grandmother just randomly make a comment about Jeep. Um, and I remember thinking that was so cool. And from that moment on, I noticed you know, marketing and ads from them. And every time I saw one, I noticed that Jeep. And I remember I was probably, gosh, maybe 10 or 12 years old at the time. And from that point on, I knew at some point I wanted to have a Jeep when I got older. And I did eventually, and it ended up not being the right car for me, 
but I love the brand and it just became so iconic, um, in my mind and just everything that's associated with that, that brand and kind of the community, um, that it's, it's built. I feel like they're a cool lifestyle brand. Um, everything from, you know, people putting ducks on, on other people's Jeeps and waving every time you see someone in a Jeep, um, to the little animals that end up on the car that you have to look for. Um, so I think it's a really cool brand that I just really started noticing over the years. It's really interesting how, how much stories that we tell ourselves or that we hear fragments from, from our parents or from friends or from you know, our family influence our choices. Because, you know, I grew up around, you know, a family that would buy certain cars, you know? So, like, my dad loved Chevy trucks. So, you know, it was almost inevitable that someday I would buy a Chevy truck, you know? And I, I it's not like I was paying attention. It's just that, you know, you have people that are older than you saying positive things about a brand. They're saying that like, Chevys are better than Ford, this, that, and the other thing. So when I, by the time I got to the time I could buy a truck... I had this opinion that Chevys were better than Ford based on nothing besides the stories I'd heard and the reasons that I'd heard in passing. So eventually I bought a Chevy and it wasn't really for me, but I'm glad that I had it at one point, you know? So it's really interesting. I think a lot of our brand, our loyalties to brands and our, the way we experience them is just based and rooted so much in the stories that we tell each other and the experiences we have that we share with others. You know, it, they really do exist in our mind. Because as soon as you brought up Jeep, I could just picture all the things I feel and think about Jeeps, you know. And I've never been a Jeep person, but I always kind of admire people that are. Because they're cool, you know. You have to be outdoorsy. You have to, like, want to go get your car muddy, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. That was a great one. I really like that one. Well, thank you guys for listening in. And uh, in the comments, like, if you... Uh, if you will, let us know any of the brands that really made an impact on you when you were young and uh, if there's any brands that you can remember from your childhood because I think that's a super cool question. So we'd love to have our audience join in and, and answer some of the questions that you guys have asked us. Any parting thoughts, Lindsay? I would love to hear what uh, what brands people think of or even if there were and even um, if there's a, you know, a commercial or an ad that they really remember um, that's kind of nostalgic to them. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that more because I could go, how about you? I could go on and on. There were so many ads that made an impact on me as a kid. It's probably how I ended up in this industry, you know, all those little stories. So, all right, everyone, thank you for listening in. And we'll be back with another break room episode after our next uh, full interview episode. And we have some great guests coming up for you all. Um, I think you guys will be really pleased with all the different caliber of guests that we have going in season four that's coming up. So thank you guys for listening in. Want to hear more inspiring stories? Subscribe on your preferred podcast app so you don't miss an episode. And if you like what we're doing, please rate, review, and share. It's the best way to support us. Thank you for listening to Brand Story.